Catholic, Lutheran, Baptist, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Methodist, Pentecostal, and thousands more. One Bible, but so many churches. Is this really the work of Christ? Find out today on Face the Truth. Are you Catholic? Or do you belong to one of the many Protestant denominations such as the Baptist Church, Presbyterian Church, Methodist Church, or maybe you even call yourself Pentecostal? Now, if we were to mention all these different names of churches under the banner of Christianity, we would be here all day or more. In fact, according to David Barrett and other editors of the World Christian Encyclopedia, a comparative survey of churches and religions, there are over 33,000 separate Christian groups in the world today. Over half of them are independent churches that are not interested in linking with the big denominations. Now, some would say these are the different flavors of Christianity. And many don't see anything wrong with this. In fact, take a look at this. And this video is entitled, Why Are There So Many Protestant Denominations? Have you ever wondered why are there so many different churches, practices, and Why religion? is it that there are so many different versions of Christianity? Well, there's different religions because there's different, there's different cultures with, a, with plethoras of, of different peoples. You have uh, Catholics, you have the Protestants who's, you know, divided. I mean, church, what, what, what denomination is this church? <laughs> We have no idea. We keep coming, but they don't tell us. <laughs> because some of us are charismatic, some of us aren't. Some of us are reformed, some of us are Arminian, some of us are congregationally governed, some of us are elder. The reason there are different denominations within Christianity is because the Bible allows for us to have differences of opinion. So yes, there is one power, one force that got everything here, but there's just different views on it. I don't think that there's anything better or worse in, in this view than this view, it's just different. Seriously, does anybody know? Christian, thanks for narrowing it down. Now as we can see, many people today see all these different denominations or churches as a good thing for Christianity. For them, this just gives people more choices. Just find the church that suits your taste or liking and join it. However, are all these various churches the work of the Lord Jesus Christ or even His apostles? Did Jesus Christ establish many different churches with different names and practices and doctrines? What does Christ and even history teach us about Christianity? Now, we must begin with the founder himself, for it is His name that many are using as part of their belief. Did Jesus Christ establish a church? And if so, how many? Let's find out who established the church. Let's go to what is written in the book of Matthew 16 and the verses 18, the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now, it can't be any clearer than this. Christ said, I will build my church. So it was none other than Jesus Christ himself who established or built his church. Now, when did the Lord Jesus Christ establish his church? Let's read from the book of Luke this time. Chapter 12 and the verse is 32. Again, from the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not fear, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, here the Lord Jesus Christ mentions the little flock. He's speaking to the little flock. What is meant uh, by the term used by Christ as the flock that he was speaking to in the verse that we just read? Well, we have to go again to the Bible for the answer. This time from the apostles in Acts chapter 20. And the verse is 28. Take heed, therefore, to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. So the flock is the church of Christ. And this is conclusive proof 
that Jesus Christ established only one church when he was still on earth, and it was named after him the Church of Christ. Now, when we say one church, what exactly does that mean? Well, we won't give you our own answer. Let's just go to the answer given to us by the Bible. And what we're going to read is what is written in the book of Colossians, chapter 1 and the verses 18. This is what the Apostle Paul himself teaches us. And he is the head of the body, the church. What exactly is the church? According to Apostle Paul, it is the body of Christ of which he himself is the head. Now, how did Apostle Paul describe this body of Christ or the church? Ephesians chapter 4 and the verses are 4, 5, and 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith. One baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now, the Apostle Paul identified the characteristics of the true church, the one church. He said there is one body, so there's only one church. And in that one body or one church of which Jesus Christ is the head, there's only one spirit guiding the church. The members only have one hope. There is only one Lord Jesus Christ, and they have only one faith or one set of doctrines. And these doctrines are the doctrines that were taught to them by the Lord Jesus Christ and preached by the apostles. And do you also notice one of the teachings and beliefs that they possess is they possess the belief in the one God who is none other than the Father. And so to teach anything else other than what Christ and the apostles taught would disqualify any church, any group from calling themselves true. And so the true church established by Christ is completely united in everything they do, especially their teachings. But is this the case with all the different denominations or churches we see today? Take a look at this. Isn't the fact that there are so many religions basically proof that nobody knows about God or the afterlife. Denominations, um, it's, it's nothing really new. You know, you had the Pharisees, you had the Sadducees, you know. If you walk up to somebody and say, what does it mean to be a Baptist? We dunk adults. Anything else? Uh, no. You say, who your pastor is? Now, depending on what they might have heard about your pastor in that particular church or your denomination, which I believe, then they can kind of size you up. You know. What does it mean to be Presbyterian? We dunk babies. We use instruments in our worship, and you don't. We right here tonight in San Francisco. We kept the raw passion for God. Because we think drums and guitars are from Satan. Because. Of syncopated music is of the devil, whatever. But then we, the tongues, the no tongues, the baptism, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, let's do it. Oh, we love you, Jesus. So, cohort, why, why do we have 37,000 denominations? It is unfortunate, but it's true, that denominational differences are due to our short sightedness and lack of love. How come we just can't have the big, unified everybody? We each have a piece of the puzzle. But we can't come together, so we can't see what the picture on the box is supposed to look like. So none of the pieces really fit together because we, we, can't, we can't see the big picture. We can't, we can't get an overview of what it is we're supposed to be doing here. Now, as you can see, what we find today is that the so many so-called Christian churches today are different in many ways. There is no unity. So they don't fit the Bible's description of the true church. The true church established by Christ is completely united in everything they do, especially in their teachings. It's just one organization. Now, are we the only ones who know and teach this fact that there is only one true church established by Christ, the Church of Christ? Why don't we go to other authorities of other religious groups? Let's say, for example, the Catholics. Do Catholic priests also affirm that Christ established a church. 
and according to them as well, what is the name of this church? We're going to read to you from a book, an excerpt from a book entitled The Fundamentals of Catholic Dogma. On page 274, I'm going to quote what is written. In regard to Matthew 16, 18, St. Cyprian speaks of the building of Christ, of the Church of Christ, and designates the Church, the Church of Christ, and the Bride of Christ. So you've seen what the Catholic authorities attest and affirm, that Christ built or established the Church of Christ. But how about Protestants? Do Protestant preachers affirm as well that Christ established a church? And according to them too, what is the name of this church? I'm going to read another excerpt from a book entitled Knowing the Doctrines of the Bible by Meyer Perlman. On page 349, we quote, Christ prophesied the establishment of a new congregation or church a holy institution that will continue his works in the world. Matthew 16, 18. This is the church of Christ. Did you notice that what we're showing you today is common knowledge among many Catholic authorities and even Protestant preachers? And that is that Jesus Christ established only one church, the church of Christ. Now, here is an important question that needs, it's begging for an answer. If Jesus Christ established or built only one church, why then do we find so many different churches existing today? Shouldn't we all belong to only one true church? Did Christ authorize the establishment of different churches with different names, doctrines, practices, etc., etc.? Absolutely not. You cannot read that anywhere in the Bible. And so what happened? What happened to the one church? The church of Christ that he established. So we told you, we are going to dig up the past or go back in history. Now sometimes when you dig up the past, you might not like what you find. However, this subject is too important, so we must expose the truth because many people want to know it and we need to know it. Now, it may take volumes of books to give all the fine details of church history, but what we will try to do is to give a condensed factual form of what actually happened to the church established by our Lord Jesus Christ in the first century. Now, what did Christ forewarn His disciples or the members of the church He established? We'll read here in Matthew 24, and the verse is 11. The Lord Jesus says this, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. Now, Jesus Christ warned His disciples that many of them would be led astray by false prophets. Now, it goes without saying that a true prophet teaches truth, but a false prophet teaches what is false or teaches lies. Now, where would these false prophets come from? Here also, from the Holy Scriptures, Acts chapter 20 and the verses 30. This time, we're going to read what the Apostle Paul himself warns the disciples. He says this, The time will come. When some men from your own group will tell lies to lead the believers away after them. Here now is a warning of Apostle Paul. And re he reiterated the warning of the Lord Jesus Christ to the members of the church then. Apostle Paul warned them that there would be men from their own group or within the church that would tell lies for what purpose? to lead the believers away after them. So you have the Lord Jesus Christ, you have Apostle Paul, who else warned about the false prophets or men from within the church who would tell lies to lead the members of the church of Christ astray? This time, 2 Peter, 
chapter 2, and the verses 1, Apostle Peter tells us this. False prophets appeared in the past among the people, and in the same way false teachers will appear among you. They will bring in destructive, untrue doctrines, and will deny the master who redeemed them, and so they will bring upon themselves sudden destruction. And so Apostle Peter not only confirmed what Christ and Apostle Paul warned, he also mentioned what lies would be told. He said the false prophets would bring in destructive, untrue doctrines. Now, did the apostles also identify some of the false teachings to be taught by the false prophets to lead the members of the church of Christ away from the true faith or lead them astray? Apostle Paul says this in the book of 1 Timothy. The chapter is 4. And the verses are 1 and 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now, Apostle Paul tells us that in the latter times or the future, some would depart from the faith. Why? Because they would give heed to or listen to false doctrines, which he identified as doctrines of the devil. Did he also mention two of these doctrines? Yes. He mentioned in the verses that we have just read, forbidding to marry, and the other one would be commanding to abstain from eating meats. Now, while this is not a show aimed at attacking others, it is, however, the goal to expose what is false and reveal also what is true. So we are just going to read the Bible, and then we're going to let the evidence lead us in whatever direction is necessary. Now, were such doctrines ever taught? And who teaches them? We're going to read an excerpt from a book entitled Faith of Our Fathers, written by James Gibbons, a cardinal of the Catholic Church. On page 328 of that book, this is what we can read. And I quote, The discipline of the church has been exerted from the beginning in prohibiting priests to marry after their ordination. So we can find within uh, the Catholic Church one of the teachings or doctrines mentioned by Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. That is, in the Catholic Church, their members, some of their members, namely the priests, are forbidden to marry. Even the nuns are not allowed to marry. Now, how about the other doctrine mentioned by Apostle Paul? That is to abstain from flesh meat or eating meat. Who also possesses that doctrine? We'll read an excerpt from another book entitled Manual of Christian Doctrine, comprising dogma, morale, and worship. On page 317 of this particular book, this is what we can quote. What does the second commandment of the church order us to do? It orders us to fast and to abstain from flesh meat on certain days of the year. So, you have seen what the Bible says. You've heard the warnings that Christ gave to His church in the first century. The apostles confirmed the warnings that many of the disciples would depart from the true faith by following false teachings. You have seen some of the false teachings that were taught to the members of the church established by Christ, which, of course, led many of them away from the faith. Now, you've also seen the evidence of fulfillment. We don't have to go and explain and look at every single detail, but you have seen it yourself. So we will leave it up to you to decide if you will accept the truth Christ told us. If you will accept what the apostles warned us about 
and what history proves really happened. However, we're not yet done with the history because we only got a part of the story. Christ did not say, if you still remember, that all the disciples would be led astray or away from the true faith. He said many. Apostle Paul did not say all would depart from the faith. He said some. And so we need to find out what happened to the other members or those who remain faithful Church of Christ members by not following the false teachings. Well, the truth may surprise you. It may even be painful, but it is absolutely necessary to know this. Because without it, you will not truly understand why you belong to the church you belong to today. And more importantly, the danger it poses to where you will spend eternity. Now, the rest of the story we will reveal to you on our next episode. You don't want to miss it.